It's working the Matus magic on the sax today, everybody. His final day here at Jimmy at the Crossroads as we get going with a special live stream edition of the program. Mr. Matus, give me a little bit more of that saxophone right there. Matouche Magic, Jimmy at the Crossroads, coming to you in partnership with the Washington Examiner, starts right now. Let's go. Gonna talk money, gonna talk politics, we're for all generations, oh, what a great mix, I said. Gonna talk money, gonna talk politics, grateful to all generations, oh, what a great mix. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads, making sense out of nonsense. Come on, Jimmy, what you got? Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Sang Style. Hello, my friends, and welcome to a very special edition of Jimmy at the Crossroads. I'm Jimmy Sangenberger, coming to you in partnership with the Washington Examiner, as always. And here with me for his final time as producer extraordinaire, working the Matouche magic, not just as producer, but also on that saxophone, Nathan Matouche. Brother, good to see you. Jimmy Sangenberger, it's great to see you, my friend. It's been, gosh, so many great memories How, here how in the world, a year and a half working with you, Matouche, and this is the first time you brought up the sax. How in the world did that happen for taking so long to do any sort of a jam together with me I, on the harp. I have no idea, Jimmy. We waited for, <laughs> we waited for the very last day. I remember talking about it like originally, but I think we just had so much going on. We we never thought of it. Not I don't know why, Jimmy, because we we gel good together. Well, we do indeed. And I'm gonna miss you. What are you up to? What's next for Nathan Matouche? Uh next for me, I'm moving to Hayes, Kansas here uh in about ten days. So doing my missionary work uh with focus, fellowship of the Catholic University students. And uh yeah, pretty much just packing my bags, you know. Our Lord and Savior's telling me to go to Hayes, Kansas and bring the Matouche magic there for a little bit. Well, I appreciate what you're doing on your journey, and we'll talk more about that later. We've got several things that we're going to dive into. In this very special hour today here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. And Matouche, I think to kind of kick things off, because there's a battle for freedom going on, most especially in Cuba right now, as we get rolling here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. You always loved when we would have, right here on the show, when we would have Free to Choose Fridays. Yes. Where we would honor the great <laughs> late Milton Friedman. It's an honor to play this intro. Because it's one of my favorites of all time. It's not a Friday. It's a Monday. But let's have a little bit of free to choose to kick things off today as we talk about the fight for the freedom to choose for individual rights and liberty in Cuba. Let's go. Let's get it rolling. Nathan Matouche is our producer extraordinaire, and he is leaving Jimmy at the crossroads. And Nathan, we talked earlier in the show about your leaving. You are going on a mission, Hayes, Kansas, and uh, I wish you the best there as you go and and do some evangeliz evangelization. Yes, for the for the faith, uh, Catholic faith, um, and the college campus there. Imagine being in a tyrannical regime that. You know, like, say, North Korea or yeah. China, where if you are celebrating the birth of Christ, for example, or mm -hmm. trying to proselytize for your faith, you are shut down. You are suppressed. 
that's yeah. that's the kind of society that we see in so many other parts of the globe. Yeah, and I, I mean, we just got to open our eyes and just to appreciate what we have here. You know, we have that First Amendment right to practice our freedom of speech. You know, worship the the God of our choice, practice the faith of our choice, and you know, we're we're very lucky to have that, Jimmy. And um, I think uh, for a lot of people to remember, um, we got to remember that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has already won. Mm-hmm. The battle's already been won. You know, he uh, he died on the cross for our sins um, to free us from our sins. And, you know, the resurrection has happened. And I think when we look at times like this for Cuba, um, we can we can look to people like Jesus Christ, um, you know, our Lord and Savior, because he, he died for us. Well, and I and I, I appreciate those words coming from someone especially who is about to embark on a mission of faith. But for people of all faiths. Mm. This, this is a reminder of what we have in America, whether you are, like Nathan and I, Christians, Catholics, uh, or not. Being able to practice your faith is one of those fundamental freedoms, and so many parts of the world don't have that. But I want to play a clip here, going back to sort of the nature of socialism as we do our final moments here with you, Nathan. Milton Friedman. Milton gotta Friedman. Love, gotta love that guy. We did three to choose opening in the beginning of the show. You always love that. Well, here are some words of wisdom about greed from the great late Milton Friedman on the Phil Donahue show. Let's get it rolling. Well, first of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. <laughs> this, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. If you want to know where the masses are worth, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear that there is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of the ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. But it seems to reward not virtue as much as ability to manipulate the system. Uh, And what does reward virtue? You think the uh, communist commissar rewards virtue? You think a Hitler rewards virtue? You think, excuse me, if you'll pardon me, do you think American presidents reward virtue? You know, I think you're taking a lot of things for granted. And just tell me where in the world you find these angels who are going to organize society for us. Well, I don't even trust you to do that. (laughs) Oh, the wit and wisdom of Milton Friedman. But Nathan, uh, May Lynn, our guest, she Mm -hmm. is like me, a graduate of something called the Leadership Program of the Rockies. We did some interviews at the Leadership Program of the Rockies retreat that we shared from June uh, last month in some episodes of Jimmy at the Crossroads. But she's a graduate of LPR, 2016 class. I'm a graduate of the 2012 class, best class ever. And in her class of 2016, though, she was a runner-up for the Defender of Capitalism Award. And, you know, you think about Cuba and communism and a communist regime. I I totally understand why she would end up being a runner-up, one of the leaders in that class for the Defenders of Capitalism Award, because you are going to be a strong defender of capitalism if you flee a country which does not allow for that kind of opportunity, and then you come here to the United States, you start your own small business, you work your way up towards greater success, you're going to look back at Cuba and say, wow, they really need the freedoms and free markets that we have here in the good old United States of America, providing opportunities for prosperity and much better lives than their people have right now. Yeah, yeah, and well said. And I mean, we we've had American presidents who who've stood up to to communism. And, you know, we right there. I mean, let's go to like your full screen, Ronald Reagan, Mr. Ronald Reagan himself. Reagan right there, the bobblehead. He, I mean, he pushed for the American values and to hold those true values. And the fact that this is going on, this has been going on since you know 1979. 
You know, oh, well, well in, was, in, I mean, in, even in, way longer in, than that. In but. Iran, that's that's in Iran. Is 1979? It was the 50s that Castro came to power. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, we've been we've been warned about this for yeah. uh, for decades for sure. And uh, I think we yeah we got to respect our our yeah. freedoms Absolutely. that were laid upon us. Well, Mr. Matush, I know you wanted to take a little bit of a trip down memory lane to a couple highlights from this program of Jimmy at the Crossroads. But before we do, if you could put me on the full screen so I can give a little bit of an update here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. We are changing some things up a little bit on the program where I'm going to be focusing more on the audio podcast for Jimmy at the Crossroads where we have been Getting things going on the podcast. I'll give you some more details on where to go with that. Uh, but we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, the major podcast apps. You can go log on there. We've got a couple of great episodes we've done already. I'll put those up on the screen in just a, a little bit. But we're going to be focusing more on the audio side there, and then the interviews will be posted up because we will still do on-camera interviews with guests. will be posted up on the Washington Examiner's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Washington Examiner, and then on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jimmy Sangenberger Pro, or you can search Jimmy Sangenberger Media Personality on Facebook. You can see on the lower third there, there's no A, there's no I, there's no U in Sangenberger. It's all E all the time once you know that Sangenberger is easy and if you go to Jimmy Sangenberger media personality on Facebook you'll be able to keep tabs there if we have special live stream episodes some big occasion then we'll be back on the YouTube channel with new content but please look up the Jimmy at the crossroads podcast on wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe now so you can keep tabs on all the great content we've got cooking up there it's going to be a lot of fun all right Mr. Matouche let's go back a little bit down memory lane there are a couple of interviews that are particular standouts for you <laughs> tell us what we got yeah, uh, so first up here, we got uh, one of the very first times that you and I were on camera together, and this was like fresh oh, on the gosh. pandemic. We got we the had the horrible backdrop. Back I know. Oh my gosh! Put oh, it up man. on the screen just as a preview, and then uh, yeah, let's see and then here. we'll get it. Uh, you can pause it. We'll get it. We'll get it going. But <laughs> oh man, so people the, know. There we, we go. Right, right, this is right during at our old studio, right during the pandemic time period as things were kicking off. I even made clear, of course, that we were six feet apart, <laughs> at least from each other at that time, because everybody was just so concerned at what was happening at that point, And we were still out and about. This is early April. This is crazy to, yeah. to go back down this this far, Mr. Matush. And I, and I wanted to find a video of us, you know, trusting dr fauci at the time you <laughs> oh know, gosh it's just the great you know he's he's the most trusted man in america i know look how i know that's what i said <laughs> and and i regret every word of it but please go ahead play the clip let's, we, let's we be embarrassed be. for a moment jimmy we were conceived by a lie we all were <laughs> deceived deceived by a lie all right yeah, let, let's play it here i mean this is this is pretty good stuff all right so people know we are more than six feet apart where you are here in this studio, mm -hmm. you're at the desk, <laughs> I'm here at the table. So we are keeping up our social distancing here. Uh, Nathan, let me ask you, before I, we get to, to oh, politics the disclaimers. for a few minutes, um, I know you're a big sports guy. In fact, last week we had you, we brought you on air, and you talked a little bit about Tom Brady announcing that he's leaving the Patriots, making that shift, which is pretty striking news, to be sure, historic for football. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, now I'm hearing you're telling me that baseball, because of the coronavirus pandemic, the season, if and when it continues, may last into December. Is that right? Yeah, into December. They're, they're discussing it. I'm not really sure if there's a lot of series around this, but I mean, can you imagine watching baseball around Christmas time? I mean, baseball season is already long as it is. I think they should just shorten the season. I mean, come on, just shorten it like, like 30 games, you know? Big deal, you have 130 games instead of 160. But, I mean, can you imagine just waking up on Christmas morning and maybe the World Series is going on? <laughs> oh, no. Well, that would be pretty crazy. But you think about it, at that time of year, you've got football going on and you'd be having baseball. How would people divide up their time if they're huge football and baseball fans and it happens to be like a, a Sunday game where there is a big conflict? 
Let's say let's say the, the the we're here in Colorado. The Broncos and the Rockies happen to be on the same day at the same time. I mean, it, it would be pretty great to be honest, Dev. <laughs> Both the Rockies and the the Broncos play in downtown Denver around that time. I don't. I'm not sure if it would last all the way to Christmas, uh, but maybe a couple weeks before. I tell you though, it, it would be pretty interesting. And I mean, football December. You know, that's that's the fight for the playoffs. And hockey. Hockey would be going. I mean, yeah, all the sports that, might be going on. At the same time, and we run into this time usually around October when we have literally all the sports on. But now it could be even longer into so, December. <laughs> wow. Oh, so a couple of observations. First of all, I feel like that's a different time zone or like a, we're in the twilight zone oh, watching yeah. that. First of all, with the old backdrop, the mm-hmm. old studio, and – you're the missing COVID craziness. The COVID the, craziness. In the thick of it right at that point. I mean, we were one of the very rare instances of actually being able to get out and about during that time because that was when the lockdowns were getting going. Yeah, I mean, that was when the lockdowns were going. And uh, I think you you like gave me that paper that I can you know keep in my glove compartment in case I get pulled over and I can say, no, no, I'm working for Jimmy at the Crossroads. I'm, I'm able to travel here. And uh, just traveling, I mean, it took like, I think like 15 minutes to get from like where I live, which was like Arvada to Aurora. I mean, <laughs> that was just insane. But, Jimmy, I think we're also missing an important fact that that's when you had Master Yoda on the set. Right there. Yoda, I mean, you see now. Yoda, uh, yes? <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's bring it back. That, that, let's bring that, it back one Let's last bring time. Yoda up for just a moment here with you, Mr. Matush. There we go. Yeah. Mind what you have learned. Save you can. Help you it will. <laughs> Yes. Hey, by the way, speaking of sports, yeah. we're here in Denver. The oh, MLB yeah. All-Star Game is coming. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Given, and we talked about this before, given that, oh my gosh, we have it here, but because we stole it from Atlanta, well, not quite. I mean, they decided, hey, we're not going to play in Atlanta. And then Colorado said, we're going to, we want you. And they made the arrangements pretty quick and were able to to swing that. But we... It feels like we stole it from Atlanta. I mean, Colorado's gain, Colorado's win, seemed to be America's loss to me because how that thing went down was just not right. Yeah, just not right at all. It's put me in a terrible position. I mean, I'm a big baseball fan. I watch the All Star Game, you know, every year, and I'm excited that's in, that it's in Colorado. But then there's another part of me. It's like, wait, I don't want to. I don't want to support that. I'm not watching that. I mean, the whole reason why they're moving it here is just because you know they made a rule where you have to have an ID to vote. I mean, just like you have to have an ID to drive a car, an ID to yeah, do the, almost, ver- I mean, pretty nonsense. much anything. The, the, the Georgia law, they had several things in that law that they were pointing to, voter ID being one, yeah. that were just absolutely absurd reasons. And I, we de- deconstructed it here on the show and explained why that was so off base. But Yeah, just, just so off base. And what's even worse about it is the fact that, you know, politics is interfering with Major League Baseball now. The whole Joe Biden going on ESPN saying, oh, I think we should move the baseball game. Know. You know, quite frankly, he's upset because, you know, you know, you know how I feel about the election this past, you know, this past fall, Jimmy. He's upset because he can't cheat now. You know, he <laughs> he can't get voters to vote when, when they don't have an ID. Yeah. I mean, that's that's essentially what, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the Democrats certainly don't want these laws in place because they would like to make it looser. But the problem when yeah. you have that is then people have mistrust or distrust in their election system, and you can't have that. But to, G- the M- to the MLB point, though, are you going to be watching the game? Oh, man, I I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I guess I, I got to make the decision, you know, am I, am I going to stand up for our country and, uh, you know, our, our voting, voting rights, voting privileges, or, you know, am I going to have a great love of the game for baseball? So, you know what, maybe I'll watch like a little piece of it, but I, I know, think, Jimmy, I think I'll, I'll because it's in Denver, yeah, I, you, I think you can get away with it. I won't be watching it, but I probably wouldn't watch it anyway. I'm not much of a of a baseball viewer, but yeah. it is something in Colorado, in Denver, downtown Denver. All these restaurants have to have family and friends come to help them because they're short staffed. Yeah, because people aren't working still because of the unemployment benefits and so forth that are being provided, disincentivizing them from going back to work. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a crazy time for sure. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out. The whole thing people. just gets me. Everything we're talking about just gets me so emotional, oh, especially yeah. having Yoda back on here. 
Master Yoda. Uh, I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, all right, Nathan, we have another trip down memory lane that you uh, wanted yeah, to take with a couple of highlights. This is last spring still, too. Last spring. Who, yeah, who did we talk to last spring that you really wanted to highlight? Yeah, there's a couple of these highlights here. We we had, uh, well, first Mark Cuban on. Let's play that, uh, your little debate, and then we'll come back, and then we'll play your, your Dave Rubin segment where you guys just really connected on Star Wars <laughs> The Revenge of the Sith, bringing Revenge of the Sith into political commentary. You're probably the first to do that, Jimmy. So <laughs> let's take a look down memory lane here of your first debate, debacle with Mark Cuban. I think uh, the, the the difference, and I appreciate it. I mean, you're, you're very much uh, articulate in presenting the perspective. I just don't have that kind of trust and faith in the federal government to do those sorts of programs. We don't let dogma go, I also don't, Well, but you it's know? not just about dogma. It's about practicality. And we've seen uh, countries Jimmy, across the globe. Yeah. So, so, Jimmy, you're an entrepreneur. I'll, I'll give you the alternative. You're an entrepreneur. Sure. You've got to create 30 million jobs over three years. Yeah. Tell me what companies can do that. So, first tell me of what all, twenty or fifty or hundred companies I, can do that. I can't tell you a specific companies that can do that because I don't know. In fact, or investors. I, I, but but, but what the I don't, greatest investors of right. all time. Well, but I don't presume to think that I know who's going to be the best investor, or the best company to do that. Just as I don't think the government is uh, that I can presume that the government's going to be effective to do it. I think if you start reopening, which seen, isn't going to be an instant process because you do have, of course you have a situation with reopening where not everybody's going to go to restaurants, not everybody's going to go to movie theaters and so forth. But if you begin that process and allow people to start their businesses back up and continue to provide some of the assistance that we've been doing, I think that could be much more effective, especially with a deregulatory regime, than having the government yeah, do what hasn't worked in the past. Look, I know that you... Okay, that happened a little bit more quickly than I anticipated, yeah. Mr. Matouche. Goodness. All right, so... Here's my quick feedback. I was right. Cuban was wrong. I I absolutely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we saw things. More jobs were created by the private sector when the government got off the backs of small businesses mm -hmm. than would have been created under his supposed job scheme and much more quickly as well. And not only that, we have seen the growth because businesses have been able to come back and the impediment to people getting back to work is also the government now, but because they're providing all these profligate unemployment benefits and so forth that are disincentivizing people from getting back to work. Yeah, it's just... It's just, I was right, Cuban was wrong. Is that just a definitive truth now? No, no, I agree. I agree you're absolutely right. And it, the fact that people are getting paid more not to work than work, I mean, that's a concern in, in this country, Jimmy, and... You know, I I personally think, yeah, yeah, you you nailed it on the coffin, and you went head to toe with billionaire Mark Cuban. That was incredible. That was a lot of fun. And then afterwards, he posted it on LinkedIn, and he said, "Conservatism versus pragmatism." Well, given the success of the private sector, at least in, in getting a lot more jobs created over the past year or so, certainly yeah. since we talked. Uh, I think that the pragmatic thing is the free market thing. That's the much better policy. Free markets, Mr. Matouche. The, li the light of the pragmatic. right. That the signifies the light of the right. You know, the before, the right. before I became a missionary, I was working uh, for a small business uh, called The Good Couch uh, back in North Glen, Co North Glen, Colorado, and we absolutely loved it. It was the American dream. You know, my friend started off literally selling couches on Craigslist at a storage unit. And then built his way up, and you know now they're they're making you know that's two awesome. three thousand dollars in sales almost per day. Uh, so that's that's just signifies the American dream, Jimmy. Yeah. Building a small business and using the free market capitalism and the right the light of the right to build it up and achieve the, the light American of the right. Dream See, you've learned is, so much, my young apprentice. Yes, yes, I <laughs> I am ready to face the trials. <laughs> yes, indeed, you are. You are. All right, you got the Dave Rubin clip. Dave I want to see this okay. one. This one's just plain fun. This one was fun. And, and by the way, my view on Star Wars, I think is, if I recall the interview correctly, it's changed a little bit mm -hmm. since that point in time at which Rubin and I spoke, and I'll explain that. Let's hear it. The government yeah, do what hasn't worked in the past. Look, I know that you are a Revenge of the Sith fan, Star Wars Revenge yes. of the Sith. And this has been in my mind because I think this is the nature. This is the way that government is right now. It reminds me of a particular scene in Revenge of the Sith. The Republic will be reorganized into the first Galactic 
For a safe and secure society, that sounds like what the argument is behind suppressing some of the speech on countervailing narratives in this coronavirus crisis and the science. That sounds like so many things that are happening in our society today. Dave Rubin. Jimmy, can I tell you that I've done about 200 shows in the last three weeks for this book tour. This has been by far my favorite interview. The fact well, that you just you. played a clip from Revenge of the Sith. I have to insert Star Wars the, the references. The force is normally. strong you with one. me. Dave, the force is strong with me. Indeed it is. Um, well, look, that, you know, I've been saying to people for years that the prequels will be looked back on much more fondly. Yes, the, the acting is stiff. Hayden Christensen's a terrible actor, and, and some of the dialogue and the love scenes are stiff. But the general idea of a, a, a person creating conflict to consistently build power, which is exactly what first uh, Senator Palpatine did, and then Chancellor Palpatine, and then ultimately Supreme Leader uh, Palpatine. That's exactly what he did. And what was he doing the entire time? The more, yeah, that scene right there, that's it. And then everyone will cheer you along as you're telling them that you're going to keep them safe from the thing that you created. So I'm not saying that our government created the coronavirus, but they create a response that is so over the top that suddenly every time they do something, we applaud them for it. So you got people in California where virtually nobody is sick and certainly young people are healthy and it's 85 and sunny every day. And they're telling us we can't go to the beach and we're all like, oh good, we can't go to the beach anymore. Well, why am I paying 13% property taxes? So the point is we need Jedi. We need more Jedi. You know, they're scattered across the galaxy. You know, another reference that I'm sure you've heard me make is that what the progressives did to the, to the liberals was basically execute order 66. Mm -hmm. the, the progressives moved into the liberals. The liberals didn't realize it because liberals are nice and liberals are tolerant and decent. And they just executed all of them. And I would say there's a couple good liberals spread throughout the galaxy, which is why I say I'm on Dagobah. And uh, I would say Bill Maher is there. And Bill Maher is an interesting character because who hates Bill Maher now? It's the left. Who loves Bill Maher now? It's the right. I mean, everything is completely upside down right now. And, uh, you know, I am a believer that, that the little guy can beat the big guy. So if Luke blew up the Death Star and all of these things can happen, then, then we can fix this problem. But it ain't going to be easy. Mind what Ruben has said. Save you at will. Help you at can. Yes. <laughs> okay, now, uh, now I'm just having too much fun. Uh, oh, but man. that was just such a great clip. Well, so that didn't get us into discussing the Star Wars movies cuz I'm more I've become more critical over the past year or so of the sequel movies but I'll I'll table that for another time. However, what are your reflections on that interview? Randomly geeking out on Star Wars kind of like that time Gordon Chang and I randomly geeked out on Star Trek. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorite that was definitely one of my favorite moments on the show when you you bring in Star Wars uh, to Dave Rubin. It was so great seeing him on on the show for sure, but I think it was so great because it's so true. I mean, when I see Chancellor Palpatine doing that, you know, the first galactic empire, you know, I, I imagine like Bernie Sanders or something like saying that, like it, uh, it <laughs> it's just so true. I mean, maybe AOC saying it, I, I don't know, but, um, you know what, Jimmy, I, I think, I think we're, I think we're going to be okay for now, but, uh, you know, it's so true that that could definitely happen in, in America. Yeah, well, I, I think so as well. And, you know, it, it really is so important for us to then keep in mind, going serious now, the true principles of freedom. And that brings me to another clip of Milton Friedman. I've got control of the mouse right now, oh, Mr. Matus. Got, I'm control. clicking around here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see uh, a little bit of, of Milton Friedman talking about the fundamental principles of freedom because, Nathan, this is, this is one of those things where you have to remind yourself about what is true and what is right and why— this country is is what it is, and we need to keep in mind these certain principles. Here's a little Milton Friedman. The fundamental principle that I am going to try to uphold was stated by John Stuart Mill in On Liberty over a hundred years ago. The only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. His own good, either physical or moral, is not a sufficient warrant. That's the fundamental principle 
that I am going to take as a given as describing my own values in trying to discuss the question of what government, government's role in a society dedicated to promoting freedom in that sense, what its role is. Look, Nathan, bottom line from my perspective, and this comes from the light of the right, be principled and hold to those principles, the kind of principles that Friedman was talking about in that clip. Mm. But as you hold to those principles, that doesn't mean you can't compromise on issues, but you must be guided by those principles through any compromise and any decisions that you make. Yeah, absolutely. When you live in, in the greatest greatest country in the world, you know, with, with our freedoms and our values, you got to hold tight mm -hmm. to those principles. You know, not saying that, you know, I mean, we're— you know, we're a republic. We're a constitutional republic. We go by the Constitution. You know, we're limited government. You know, sometimes you got to have the government for, you know, some sort of well, thing. Uh, but Nathan, what are the nine most word, most terrifying words in the English language? Oh, yes. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. There you go. That's like what Chancellor Palatine did. You know, those, <laughs> those first true. couple it episodes. It is true. You know, episodes one and two, Phantom of the, <laughs> the Phantom Menace and the, uh, the Clone Wars. Yeah. Attack of the Clones, you know. Yes. He was he was saying that. You yeah. know, he was like, yeah. I, I'm here for you, you know. No. Good. And then, yeah, yes. then he turned in. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, yeah. Nathan Matouche, I want to share a, a little bit of what we've got coming up with the Jimmy at the Crossroads podcast, what we've already got done yes. on all of your favorite podcast apps. We just added iHeartRadio to the list. But please put this up on the screen. This is episode one. Went up a couple of weeks ago with Charles Murray, author of, he's a social scientist at, uh, and a political scientist at the American Enterprise Institute, a really interesting new book called Facing Reality. And I talked with him. Also, Andy No, Antifa expert. I got the chance to speak with him at the Western Conservative Summit face-to-face, -face, and that's included in episode one, and, and I love that. Please put up episode two as well. That just went up this past Friday. Senator Rick Santorum on the subject of the filibuster, why we need it, and why it is one of the last vestiges of small-r Republican governance and guarantees of federalism in our country. Plus, Dr. D James Lindsay, Ph.D., is author of a book called Cynical theories. And that really delves into crit critical race theory and uh, social justice and other such ideas and how they've expanded on college campuses, in the media, how it's grown over time to become more intrusive into our society. That's an episode you do not want to miss. Please put that back up on the screen one more time, Mr. Matouche. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, also on iHeartRadio. Moving forward, I'm going to be doing a weekly podcast on the Jimmy at the Crossroads podcast. Subscribe now, please, if you haven't done so already. And then also, I will go ahead and uh, be doing a video interview with whichever guest we're going to have on the podcast in the future. We're going to be moving forward with that. I think either this week or next week, we will start with video interviews for the most part. And then the videos will be on the Washington Examiner's YouTube channel, so you can watch face-to-face -face in that regard as well, in addition to listening to the full audio podcast. But I'm excited for what's to come, and we still will here on this YouTube channel and on the Facebook page for Jimmy Sangenberger, media personality, we still will do some occasional live streams and special edition programs. But Nathan Matouche, producer extraordinaire, do you have that sound effect? Can we get the applause sound effect, please, if you pop up that volume a little bit? Let's give a round of applause to you, Mr. Matouche. Yes, thank you. And for what we've developed here on Jimmy at the Crossroads, I'm going to miss you, brother. God bless you, too, you on your new mission in Hayes, Kansas. Yes, don't forget about Hayes, Kansas. Remember, folks, pray for Hayes, Kansas. We need missionaries out there. And, uh, you know, college campuses, It's uh, it can be tough for uh, people to find faith out there. So yeah. I, I, I'm going to love what, what I'm doing, Jimmy. But uh, I'm definitely, you know, this this show is going to stay close to my heart. It's, uh, man, it's just been a pleasure, man. We, we've been doing this for, for over a year, and it's not going to die. 
you know, come on, we're, we're going to be. Oh, oh well, no, 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 no. There's a new phase of Jimmy There's, at the yeah. crossroads. That's what's happening. We're moving into the next phase. But but I'm saying like you and I. Like, oh we're, yes, we're, we're going to be back. Oh yes, I mean, it, it, yeah. the, the, there must uh, the the uh, Empire strike strikes back, struck back, striked back. I think it's struck. Whatever the, the Empire, Empire did, they did back. it already, and they strike back, struck back, something like that. Yeah. Matouche magic, Jimmy Sangenberger, the light of the right, free to choose, making sense out of nonsense. Yes. Just choose your slogan, choose your thing. It's going to keep going. Oh, it's definitely going to keep going. And, and folks, remember to keep listening to those podcasts. I'll be listening Apple Podcasts, Jimmy at the Crossroads. This sounds interesting. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, Nathan, it has been such a treat to work with you for the past, um, not entirely for the past year and a half, but more or less. And and I, it's just been such a treat, and I wish you the best, and I look forward to what's to come. All right, Jimmy. Signing off for the final time. I'm Matouche Magic, Nathan Matouche, alongside Jimmy Sangenberger, Mr. Sang Style. Nathan, thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. That is it for us today. Talking politics, great for generations. Oh, what a mix. I got Jimmy at the crossroads, making sense out of no, no sense. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah.